um, Mary Ellis will be talking about that later. We're working with the University of Montana Bureau, Bureau of Business and Economic Research to actually study the economic impact of farmers markets through Montana. And this will be useful to garner support at the state and local level. And then we want to help um, all of you as markets to find useful and simple ways to track data that can be used to garner support and to be used for outreach for your market. And then last but not least, we're continuing to expand our opportunities with um, farms and farmers markets to accept SNAP and other nutrition programs for people with limited incomes. And then next slide, Mara. So when I say we, I mean a host of partners that are contributing their expertise to this project. And many of these partners are here today with us to share the, the incredible resources that they're bringing to the table. Um, but this program also relies on you, the market managers, the vendors, and board members. Um, we'll be asking for your participation and partnership through the next three, three years. And that may be in the form of surveys, because we want to know how we can help you. Um, or, you know, hosting somebody at the market to do some customer counts and do customer surveys um, that will ultimately go to help you. And then, um, Finally, you know, participating in these networking events because a big part of this project is the peer learning that we have found to be so valuable um, over the last three years. And so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Mara and she'll uh, be going over the rest of the agenda for today. Thanks, Tammy. All right. All right, so here is just an overview of our agenda. Um, as you see, we started with our welcome and announcements um, and discussion about Padlet. And um, in the next little bit, we're going to do a little bit more sharing with Padlet. And we also have Nina Heinzinger here with the Department of Health and Human Services to help answer any questions um, you might have about the upcoming market season. Um, and then at 1030, we have a presentation with the Farmers Market Coalition and at 11, vendor specific training and resources. And 1110, Abundant Montana with Lindsay Ganong and the economic impact of Montana Farmers Markets with Tammy at 1125. Um, at 1135, I'll give a quick uh, discussion about accessing technical assistance and and our new mentor market program. And at 11.50, we will have a presentation with the Montana Department of Agriculture. At noon, we have a presentation with Ian Finch at, from CFAC with the double snap dollars updates. And whoops, let me, <laughs> there we go. Um, first technical difficulty, there we go. Um, all right. We'll just stay there. At 12.15, we will um, be doing some goal discussion and Q and open Q&A. So I am actually going to, um, Tammy's going to drop in the second Padlet link. And we're gonna go here, there we go. Can you all see that okay? Yep, okay, awesome. Yep. Great, so, um, so please feel free to um, drop in pictures from the last market season um, or even add some comments about, you know, maybe what you experienced in last market season um, with, with COVID and just how interesting everything was. And feel free to take yourself off mute and ask questions or pop them in the chat for Nina. Um, so we'll, we'll do this for the next um, 12 minutes or so before we start with our next uh, presentation with FMC. And this is looking awesome already. So fun. It is looking awesome and we, we definitely want to um, provide this opportunity to for folks to just like just reflect on the season. It was a really challenging season. Um, so what went really great what went um, terrible and so how do we put stuff on there 
Um, there, so there's a little um, circle with a plus sign and you just click on that and then um, you can write a reflection or there's a way to upload an image with, a, um, with an arrow. The, um, that's the upload sign. And um, Mara, Kanye was wanting to make the screen larger. I don't know if I can make my screen larger on my end. I know it appears a little bit smaller when I'm sharing through Zoom. Um, so I, I wonder if it would be in the, the, the view options. You can Zoom ratio, Connie. No, you have to wait. So I can. I have my farmer's market up here at Eureka but my helper has the pictures and I don't believe she's on. So we can send you some later. How's that? That's, that sounds great. And um, you'll be able to access these padlets after the meeting. So we can also, uh, we can share them afterwards in some follow-up emails as well. So folks can have a little bit more time to look at them um, and read through the comments. So thank you. And Nina, since you're on, I wonder if, did you want to just say a few words about the resources I sent out yesterday that you had updated for this, uh, for this upcoming market season? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. This is Nina Heinzinger, and I'm with Food and Consumer Safety. And we work with the sanitarians throughout the state of Montana. And you should have received in that email yesterday the 2021 Farmer's Market Guidelines. And that just goes kind of through the different types of things that are allowed at the market in terms of food. Um, what needs to have a permit and what can just be sold um, under the farmer's market exclusion. So there's certain products such as co hot coffee and hot tea and raw agricultural products. And then things like um, cookies and baked goods that can be sold without um, a license. But then other things such as when you get into homemade ta the taco stand or something like that, that is going to need um, a permit from your local sanitarian. And I really encourage you this year, we sent out um, the COVID recommendations, but each county has different rules right now. So it's going to be really important for you to check in with your local sanitarian and make sure that you're coordinating your market with the local sanitarian um, to respect the rules within your county. So some counties have limits on um, gathering sizes, some have limits um, in terms of masking. So just be aware that this is something you're going to have to coordinate with your local sanitarian. Um, and our office can always provide you with some general support, um, general information, but your local sanitarian is going to be the one who's really there, um, feet on the ground, working with you to try to make your market work successfully um, and responsibly following those different um, re restrictions depending on your county. So are there questions on working with your sanitarian or any of those um, restricted items on, at markets, what, what needs a license or anything like that. If you've got a new vendor you're not quite sure about, um, any questions from all of you? This is, I have a quick one. Oh, go ahead, Sam. 
Um, I, this is Sammy. Sorry, I don't have my camera working right now, but okay. I'm in Red Lodge, and I just had someone contact me this week about lemonade. Having a lemonade. Lemonade is a great product, but it does require you to have either a temporary permit, which is what we usually see at the farmer's market, or a retail license. So if they've already got a um, brick and mortar location or a mobile, then they might have that retail license, but otherwise they're going to need a um, temporary permit. And those can be good for throughout the market season. So it's kind of like they get one temporary permit that's um, now we have temporary permits that are good up to 45 days at the same event that, you know, repeats over the season. Um, so they'll work with their local sanitarian for that lemonade because lemonade is a product that does require refrigeration if it's um, stored for any length of time and juicing does have some risk to it. Um, so there's going to be some planning there. Awesome, thank you. Nina, I was talking to some folks at the Helena Farmers Market yesterday, and I do see on the padlet that maybe someone from Helena Farmers Market is here. And I know that they are still, even this year, trying to get their market changed from, you know, counting as an event in Lewis and Clark County to being a market. And do you know if that's still happening across the state, or, you know, how can we get markets switched over faster and more efficiently? That is something that the local boards of health have control over. We don't have control at the state level, unfortunately. Um, so a lot of our markets are sponsored by a county organization, um, but not all of them are. Some of them are just kind of um, individualized, you know, boards and groups that are running it and it unfortunately it's we are a locally regulated um, state so most of the regulations are set up at the local level and local boards of health can do different things so it's really going to be coordination with those local sanitarians um, in terms of that. Um, sometimes, and this is where it's good to network with some of the other markets. So, I mean, um, working with a market that you know is succeeding in their community and, and what they've done to do it can be helpful as you try to work with your local board of health. Um, so I really like, and, and I've seen in the past people working with other counties, um, getting some suggestions from each other for that, so, but it is under local control. We don't have control of it here at the state. We sent, set some general rules, but then each county can set their own rules above and beyond those general rules. Thank you. This, this is no. Terry Johnson from the Helena Farmers Market. And in your response to, or in, in your discussion, uh, we are in the process right now of trying to uh, work with the county health department to see if we can't get the designation. Uh, we are classified as an event according to the health department. And when it's classified as an event, uh, last season we had to shut our market down because we could only have 250 people uh, attend our market for the entire market time and our times are from nine to one. So we could only have 250 people come through and that was it. It wasn't uh, a, you know, 250 people in and if one left, we could get another one. It didn't work that way. It was just a maximum of 250. So we just got notification a few days ago that the County Health Department is is going to possibly uh, redefine our market and it will no longer be an, an event and it'll be more like a uh, treated like a grocery store. And so we're hopeful that we will actually be able to open up for this season. Uh, 
we got a lot of regulations that it looks like we'll have to go through based on what they provided to us. But uh, at this point, we're fairly optimistic that we might actually be able to open for this season. That's great to hear too. Yeah. That is good to hear. Um, so hopefully that'll work out for you guys. I know that um, Gallatin County, they've been pretty successful keeping that Bozeman market open. I don't know if somebody looked like somebody from Bozeman is on here too. I don't I know here. how they've yes. worked with their <laughs> county. Um, so what have you been able to do down there Hi. in Gallatin? Yeah. My name is Sarah Friedrich. I'm the manager of the Gallatin Valley Farmers Market. We are considered a market um, and we've been deemed essential and kind of terms of, you know, like a grocery store, as Terry was saying. Um, so we have been allowed to, we don't necessarily have a um, max limit as to the number of people that can come throughout the whole time. We just have to monitor to ensure um, that our indoor pavilion isn't, you know, too, too packed at one time, but we are considered a market and deep essential, so. And we've just been working really closely with our health department and ensuring every step of the way, asking them if that is okay and just, <laughs> trying really hard. Oh, sorry. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Nina, I have a question and actually our sanitarian came and asked, talked to me about it the other, well, earlier this week about the um, Food Choice Act that's going through the legislature. <laughs> Um, he, he was just concerned that it might change and then he suggested that we talk to you if you know anything more about, you know, where that might be headed, um, how that might impact farmers markets, if anything, or when that might be implemented if it does pass. Okay, so it probably will affect farmers markets. Um, I would make sure that you are very familiar with your liability insurance um, because if this goes through, um, it's going to allow for anybody to sell anything homemade. Um, but that does not mean that you are still off the hook if an outbreak is then tied to your market. Um, usually people will go for the deep pockets. Your vendors are not necessarily going to have insurance. Um, so they're going to be looking um, farther up the food chain for that. Um, we don't know it has passed out of the Senate, but not, you know, in the House, it hasn't gone. Um, it basically removes all food requirements, including ingredients. So somebody could sell brownies containing cat litter. Not a problem. Um, brownies containing drugs. Anything. Um, the way it's written right now. So just a heads up. <laughs> so it is something that we are concerned about at the state level, um, but we'll have to see where it goes. Um, so I ask may if it, again, it, unfortunately how it's written, it doesn't necessarily eliminate our regulations of the um, farmer's markets. So that's going to end up in court probably um, because it doesn't take away our current laws. <laughs> so there'll be a lot of conflicts when it, if it does pass. Oh, well, can I ask a question? If, yeah. Um, can our farmers markets, because we have a ruling in Eureka that it has to be, we go with our, our county health group, but also it has to be made or baked in Eureka or in Montana. So if some, we had one lady that was selling canned goods and the, our health department said, no, they cannot do that. So are we still going by our health, our health room, our health laws up here in Eureka? Yeah, so your county can have stricter guidelines than the state has. So again, oh. 
you're regulated by your county board of health and they can set regulations above and beyond what we have at the so oh, even level. even if this bill passes we could still go use our county as say and our county says you cannot do That's that right. yeah yeah okay yeah. all right if this bill passes there'll probably be, be a lot of litigation and uh further stuff because there's so many conflicts with existing rules that it does not address. So just a heads up, you know, it's supposed to be effective immediately, but unfortunately it doesn't address a lot of the other regulations that are in place. So as a market, can we still, um, even if it's not like county regulated, can we implement your, our own guidelines? Your, your market can impose whatever. So many of our markets do have their own restrictions, such as what she was pointing out in Eureka, um, where it needs to be made right in the county, um, or it needs to have, you know, some count, some markets don't allow any like food trucks at them. Other markets do allow food trucks. Some markets don't allow any retail establishments. Some markets do allow retail establishment. That's up to your local, okay, both your local board of health has certain restrictions, but then your local market can have restrictions on top of that. So that's up to your local. Um, so yeah, um, so some, some of our markets do have very specific restrictions beyond what even the county has. So, um, you know, and th that's, you know, part of being an organization is, is setting those guidelines for your own group as well. Um, and that's what makes some of our markets very distinctive too, is that we have some markets in cities, you know, more than one market and one market is one way, one market's another way. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. Thanks, Nina. Um, we will have some time at the end of the meeting too for additional Q and A, um, but we need to move on to yeah. our next uh, our next presentation with FMC. So I'm going to hand it over to to Tammy and Hannah. Um, thank you all so much for sharing those great photos on Padlet. Yeah, we'll make sure that we, we share them with all of you um, after this. We're going to um, do a follow up with some resources and such that um, come up and we'll make sure some of this um, uh, information about the Senate bill is in there as well. So for you to all follow up on um, individually. So we're thrilled to have our partners with the Farmers Market Coalition joining us today. Uh, we'll, we will be working with them to do a targeted Farmers Market Week campaign this year. As many of you know, NCAT has um, has joined the Farmers Market Coalition as a network leader as well, um, which gives you as market managers um, access to many of the great Farmers Market Coalition resources at no cost. So that's super um, exciting for, for all of you. And if you, um, that the instructions for doing that are in the document that you received um, and the reminder yesterday. So um, we'll make sure we send out that, that code. There's a coupon code in there um, and you'll be able to um, use that to sign up for Farmers Market Coalition membership. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Hana um, and she's going to get us hyped up about National Farmers Market Week. And um, I think Stephanie Fenty um, will also be um, joining her um, as well. So um, have, I'll take it away. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just going to share my screen here quickly. Let's see. Can everybody see that? Is that looking good? Is that me and Stephanie, you can see our faces. Awesome. I'm a little washed out today. It's sunnier in Oregon than it usually is. So, um, but yeah, I, um, my name is Hannah Fuller and I am the communications associate for the Farmers Market Coalition. And I'm here with my colleague, Stephanie. 
Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Fenty. I'm the Manager of Operations and Strategic Engagement at FMC. Um, we're just really quickly gonna tell you a little bit more about the membership um, options that Tammy mentioned, and then a bit about National Farmers Market Week. Um, so FMC is a national organization. Our mission is to strengthen farmers markets for the good of farmers, consumers, and communities. Um, we do that through providing support and resources to market operators. Um, and so as Tammy mentioned, uh, the Montana Farmers Market Network is a, member, a state member of FMC. And what that means is that uh, all of you market operators get access to a free FMC membership. Um, the instructions for doing that, like Tammy mentioned, is in that PDF that we sent out, but I'm gonna really quickly just run through how to do that. Um, so to activate your free FMC membership, you'll want to visit the membership page on the FarmersMarketCoalition.org website. If you have been, a, if you have never been a member of FMC in the past, you'll click the Become a Member button on the page, and you'll choose a single membership, and then you'll fill out your contact information for your market. If you have been a member of FMC in the past, you'll click the button next to that, the current member login, and you'll log into your account. So um, if, you if you think you've been a member or you're not sure, you can always send us an email to info at farmersmarketcoalition.org and uh, find out, just tell us your market name and your name and the email address you think it might be under, and we'll be able to search and find your account. Um, so if you're doing it that way, once you log in, you'll see a page that looks like this, and you'll choose details and then renew. Um, again, you'll pick the single membership, and then in both cases, whether you're creating a new membership or logging into your account, you'll eventually be prompted to enter a coupon code, and the page looks a little like that. Um, the coupon code is listed in the PDF document, again, that we sent out, um, and you'll be able to get it from Tammy in the future. So once you have your membership active, it'll be free. Uh, you'll have access to FMC's member-only resources, as well as a voice in uh, our national farmers market advocacy and opportunities throughout the year. Um, and one of our major initiatives is, of course, National Farmers Market Week. And we have a lot of really great National Farmers Market Week resources that are member only, as well as a variety of other resources and discounts that you can access through that account. Um, and so Hana will tell you a little bit more about National Farmers Market Week and um, preparing so that Montana markets can make the most of it this year in 2021. Awesome, thank you, Stephanie. So National Farmers Market Week is a national celebration of everything farmers markets. Um, we have markets that celebrate in all 50 state states. There were markets in Guam celebrating last year. So it's really uh, a big national celebration that happens online, but it also happens at individual markets. So we, um, it, the week is proclaimed by the USDA. It's always the first week of August, so you can mark your calendar for the next 10 years, National Farmers Market Week, that first week of August. And um, it happens a lot on social media, so it's a lot of sharing exciting things about markets and everything that markets are for their communities but a lot of markets also use it as an opportunity to engage with their local community, have events. Obviously during COVID, there are some limitations for what markets can do, but in, that, in 2020, we were so excited about the creativity and innovation that we saw even during National Farmers Market Week for every market to be able to celebrate. So we saw some people were doing some awesome posters and app market engagements. Um, around the country. Like Stephanie said, FMC provides a lot of tools and resources for markets to make celebrating National Farmers Market Week as easy as possible because it's a lot of fun, but we also know that you guys are all really busy and, um, and it can be a lot of work to put together a celebration. So every year we put together a National Farmers Market Week toolkit. And in that toolkit, um, there are 
resources for advocacy. So we have a lot of resources to invite policymakers to the market and to use National Farmers Market Week as an occasion to engage with your local policymakers. Um, you guys are just having a great discussion about policy and how much that can affect our day-to-day -day, um, operations. We also have a lot of social media tools and graphics that are ready for you to share um, and we'll be we'll be working with you all to make some montana specific resources as well and so maura i'm going to ask you to start the poll now um, so we have some questions for you all before we keep going we'd love to get an understanding of um, how you have participated in national farmers market week in the past maybe you haven't at all um, and we'd just love to get an understanding of your guys's experience with national farmers market week before we keep going We'll wait for a few a few more minutes as you fill out that three question poll. Awesome. I'm not sure you guys can see the results, but I'm seeing the results come in. Um, and it's really exciting to see. Great. So it looks like it looks like a little less than half, probably around a third, um, have participated in National Farmers Market Week before, which is exciting to see. We're gonna talk a little bit now about uh, why you might want to participate in National Farmers Market Week. So for those of you that haven't, so for those of you that have, if you wanna jump in the chat and start to share maybe why why you've participated in National Farmers Market Week, what you might have gained and share and learn um, from each other. That would be really exciting. But I will now get to hype up everybody else who hasn't participated in the past about why you might why you might want to. So thank you so much for that poll. And here we go. So why should you participate in National Farmers Market Week? During a busy market season, why should you add all this extra work to your plate what is in it for you as a market operator or as a board member or a really active volunteer why would you want to put in all this energy so first up we have this advocacy and engaging legislatures piece so this is a really exciting time for farmers markets because there's so much happening and it's a time to share with our representatives and elected officials that farmers markets are essential and the value that they have in their communities. So we saw last year a lot of um, different counties, states, and regional organizations reaching out to those legislatures and elected officials and inviting them to the market and showcasing why their market is essential. And we've seen it over the past year that those organizations and markets that had a really strong relationship with their elected officials were oftentimes the most successful in engaging with these issues around the pandemic and staying operational and having things run smoothly. It's also an opportunity to engage with media and local press using National Farmers Market Week as an occasion to reach out to your local media is usually really successful for markets and can be a great way to share your market story. So by engaging with your media, you oftentimes get more customers, more sponsors, and it can be an opportunity for you to define how your market is shared and represented in media and can be a great opportunity for outreach. And so oftentimes, this data collection can be a really great tool. So like Tammy was saying, all of these tools that NCAT is going to be working with you guys this year to collect data and share the story of your market, National Farmers Market Week can be an, a wonderful opportunity to share those and really showcase your programs and fundraise for your programs. This year has seen a lot of um, 
innovations and changes in markets. And so National Farmers Market Week can be a great opportunity to showcase those programs, showcase the innovations that you've done to keep your community, community safe, um, and also potentially fundraise for extra things that your market does, those mission-driven programs that really make your market who you are. Lastly, we are, our role with FMC is to have that shared state and national messaging. So by coordinating together and doing all of these activities within the framework of National Farmers Market Week, we all can lift each other up and share shared messaging about National Farmers, Mar national Farmers Market Week, but also about farmers markets in general. And so by having the shared messaging, we can all kind of coordinate and each message is stronger because we're working together to showcase how wonderful farmers markets are across the nation, but especially in with this group, how wonderful Montana farmers markets are. So now we are going to look forward to National Farmers Market Week 2021. So the pictures that we've been sharing are from 2020, um, and we've been, I've been talking a lot about what happened this past year, but now it is time to look forward and, and talk about planning. While it is still probably a little chilly and might seem silly to start planning already for August, we all know how important planning can be and making the most of this time. So, um, I am going to get back into the chat and see what's been going on in there. <laughs> Some great messages uh, coming out from what folks have done in past years for National Farmers Market Week. Um, Connie said that we have fun, it motivates vendors, it gets the public interested. Yes, it's definitely a great reason to participate. Um, Samantha had a really great idea. Uh, she said, we have utilized Farmers Market Week for awareness and special food related events. It would be fantastic to form a county-wide event with all of our markets organizing a collective event. O'Hara Commons is happy to spearhead this with Ravali County Markets. Love that idea and we really think that's a lot of what we're talking about is how uh, Montana markets can work together and really coordinate to make sure that the messaging is strong and reaches many, many more people. Um, so Maya says, we celebrate pretty passively, but it's a great way to tie our market into things that are happening at, happening at a national level. Yeah, exactly. That's what, um, and I think at a state level too, right? And so that's what's really nice about National Farmers Market Week is there's just so many different um, levels at which you could participate. You can do a ton, ton, ton of planning and do a, a lot of events and um, across online, in person, um, or you could just participate to the level of your capacity and you can still get a lot of benefit out of it. Um, Western Sustainable, I'm not seeing the full name, Sustainability <laughs> said, new to managing the Livingston Farmers Market. Uh, I've only attempted to participate once last year. I sent out a press release about it and did some social media to get people to the market. I would have liked to have had more events, but due to COVID, we only had a scavenger hunt for kids and a raffle drawing to draw, drum up funding for the market. Looking forward to doing more this year. I mean, those are some pretty good events. <laughs> Honestly, that's, that's great. Did, did those go pretty well? And feel free to, if folks wanna unmute and, and chat about it too, um, we could have a discussion. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Um, no yeah. Worries. So the uh, the kids really love doing the scavenger hunt, and the raffle wasn't as as great as I had hoped, but um, but that's okay. You know, um, usually it would be. It's a pretty mm -hmm. big market in Livingston. It's just uh, you know, COVID. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that scavenger hunt went well, and um, yeah, yeah, that's really awesome. Um. Okay. Let's see what else is in the chat. Sorry, I'm getting a little lost. Uh, Sammy says that in the past they've not had great support from their city. So in 2019, they had the mayor and a city councilwoman come to the market and sign a local proclamation. Awesome. That's so great. I also painted a giant carrot, carrot on plywood for people to take pictures with. Uh, amazing. I'm sure, I'm sure you got some really fantastic photos. From and we'll that. have to share some photos about the carrot. When I say it was yes. giant, very big. <laughs> in the future, I'll make a smaller one. <laughs> No way. I think a giant carrot sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, if, maybe you could drop some photos in the, um, the Padlet 
even if it was from 2019, it still would be really awesome to see. I think that's a, another great thing about National Farmers Market Week is when you do have these activities and in-person things, um, the photos are great throughout the year for your for your market to use for social media and for um, additional marketing. Uh, Meredith says, August is the height of the summer bounty and is a perfect time to highlight our local producers and farmers markets. Last year was my first year with the Missoula Farmers Market and I really appreciated the toolkit, which I used to post our, uh, to our social media channel channels. I hope to do more this season. That's great to hear and um, we will probably be soliciting some requests from folks um, about what what more we can add to the toolkit, how we can make it better, um, and also what um, at FMC we're going to be trying to do more trainings around communications and marketing leading up to National Farmers Market Week. So hearing the feedback from you all about what would be useful for you, what what will you use, and um, what uh, do, what do you think is missing from the toolkit that we already have, which is extremely helpful information for us to hear. Stephanie, I got a message, I think it was sent to me instead of to everybody, so I'm just going to read it out from Blanche. It says that National Farmers Market Week makes people who don't know much about farmers markets uh, see the wonderful things that we do at the farmers market. So um, exactly, it's, it's, it's time to share what you're doing and put some focused effort into that. And there's the, the week is, can be used as an occasion to really pull in people that maybe wouldn't be interested or it wouldn't cross paths with the farmer's market on, on their regular um, regular go comings and goings. So it's a really great time to, to pull more people in. Absolutely. So I'm wondering if anybody- Also- Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say also uh, on farmer's market week, we have Wednesday as our farmer's market. And on that week we give uh, like, not the double snap, but the regular snap, we give double those. So like if somebody comes in and gets 10, they get 10 double snap and they get another extra 10 of the regular snap at no cost to their, to their card because that way it encourages people to come and use their card to get onto farmer's market. We also have music all throughout our farmer's market. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think that Farmer's Market Week is so, it's it's a very general celebration. And so you can use the programs you already have at your market and, you know, amplify them through through National Farmer's Market Week. So yeah, adding additional doubling um, for SNAP dollars is a fantastic use of that. Thanks for sharing. I was wondering if anybody has been already thinking about National Farmers Market Week this year, if they have any plans uh, in the works already, or even even just ideas or thoughts in the works. No worries, if not, it's very, very early. <laughs> there was um, somebody that wanted um... Oh, Meredith uh, from the Mo Missoula Farmers Market wanted to see if um, Shannon might be willing to share um, how she she did the scavenger hunt. So I suggested that she do that on the Facebook group because I think most people are um, um, in the network or on the Facebook group. Great idea. Fantastic. I think sharing these ideas between market um, operators is really a great way to make sure that you're all learning, we're all learning together and like finding the best ways to make activities like these and initiatives like these work out well. <clears throat> I guess another question I have is if anybody had, I know we only have a couple minutes left, but if anyone has any ideas off the top of their head for what kinds of communications and marketing trainings could be the most useful for preparing for National Farmers Market Week, um, these are all plans that are in the works at FMC. So thinking about what market operators would like to see uh, would really help us. I, I would love to see um, 
I know we're going to do this later on in the year, but um, I, I'd like to see um, how we can think about the uniqueness of Montana and Montana's farmers markets and um, and the strength of Montana's Montanans. <laughs> and then there's um, somebody here that said they would like to um, effectively use video YouTube to promote the market. Yes, definitely. Video is such a strong tool. Um, I think that's a great idea. And we have, we've done a, a short graphic design for non-designers webinar um, earlier this year, and I think we'll definitely want to repeat that one um, if folks are interested in it. And Jason Moore um, from the Hot Springs Farmers Market said, could we bring all Montana markets that want to share in farmers market week marketing statewide. Maybe you could clarify that a little bit, um, Jason. Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Oh, excellent. Well, I think a lot of our marketing for that, that week long uh, event would be done on a statewide level if we looked at different forms of marketing. I know Facebook is, is an example of what we can do to share, but there, there might be some other national things like maybe the radio or um you know tapping into our legislature's contact yeah. <clears throat> so yeah like definitely like to work on that i think this is uh, something we're going to put on our radar for uh, our big project fantastic yeah i think that's a great idea and you know through this project we're gonna be planning some future calls with montana markets for how we can can make us, you know, do statewide initiatives and yeah, like you said, tap into national messaging as well. And then finally, Melissa was wondering if there's actually a national logo for National Farmers Market Week and maybe you could address that. Yeah, we usually put out, I, I don't know if I would call it a logo, but we usually put out um, like a graphic for our National Farmers Market Week that you can slap onto some images um, for social media. And we edit it, we uh, tweak it a little bit each year so that, you know, it has a little bit of a different feeling year, year to year. Um, but yes, we definitely have some images that you can use and we'll likely probably be making some Montana specific um, social media images and uh, graphics as well. I don't know if we'll do a logo. That's something we can kind of decide together. Well, we're, we're a little over our time, but thank you all so much for your participation. It was really great to hear some ideas and we're looking forward to working on this uh, more on future calls. Yeah, thank you all so much. And just, just so you know, just as a heads up, um, we, We'll be doing a farmer National Farmers Market Week specific um, training and tools and all that kind of stuff just for Montana farmers markets um, as we get closer to the date. So just keep an eye on um, the the different outreach tools we've been using. Thanks, Hannah and Stephanie. We really appreciate it. So um, next on the roster is Mary Ellis from the Community Food and Agriculture Coalition. Um, she's going to be talking about vendor engagement. And um, you may be familiar with the Community Food and Agriculture um, Coalition through their farmers market and double snap dollars work, but they also have an amazing beginning farmer program and network called Planning for On-Farm Success. And so we um, have been collaborating with um, that side of CFAC um, to help um, do vendor targeted trainings and tools. Um, and Mary's going to talk with you about that next. Yeah, thanks so much, Tammy. It's good to see you all virtually. Um, I'm just going to be speaking a little bit about um, kind of a partnership with Tammy and NCAT and with many of you all on um, developing what vendor resources and trainings um, to help increase success for your vendors. Um, and like 
Tammy said, I'm the um, beginning farmer and rancher program manager for CFAC. So um, Ian Finch is here today. He's our food access double snap dollar guru. Um, but I work on um, the beginning farmer side of things at CFAC. So we provide lots of different trainings from um, production to lots of business planning and um, other, you know, specific trainings that help um, beginning farmers find land. Um, but I'm really excited to be working with, um, specifically with vendors at farmers markets um, and hopefully help increase their success. Um, so I'm just going to talk about a little bit about the projects that Tammy and I are um, going to be working on with you all and that's um, we're going to be working on developing a farmers market vendor toolkit um, this year and um, also regional um, vendor trainings um, across the state of Montana um, and then also offering one-on-one -on -one technical assistance to your vendors. So if they are interested in a um, specific topic that they would like support in, if it's, you know, booth design or um, social media marketing or anything um, that they would like support in, we're here um, for that, for them for that as well. Um, and kind of creating a more holistic vendor support um, for vendors throughout the state. Um, Many of you might have seen, um, we sent out a vendor survey um, a few weeks ago. I think some of you might have got it from me, some of you might have got it from Tammy. Um, but that is just um, really focused on gathering information from your vendors. So if you, thank you so much for everyone who sent it out. We've gotten, I think we've gotten like a little over 20 responses right now from vendors, um, which is really helpful. Um, I think we put the end date on March 5th, but we are going to keep it open because we want more information from your all your vendors. So if you don't mind, you know, following up with vendors for folks that have sent it out already, um, or, you know, maybe if you haven't got a chance to send it out, if you're able to, we'd really, really appreciate it. It's just like a five minute survey. It should be really quick for folks to fill out. Um, and it's going to be super helpful as we're developing um, resources for vendors to us be able to actually use information straight that they want, um, that they need. Um, and I think it will just make, um, yeah, better resources in general. So if you have a chance to send that out to your vendors, we'd really, really appreciate it. And we'll send some language along with that as well. I think Tammy, when um, you send that out on Monday. Yep, I'll send it out on Monday with the other resources. And in and, and case you're feeling inspired at the moment, I just put it in the, <laughs> in awesome. the chat. <laughs> cool. Yeah, thank you for doing that, Tammy. Um, yeah, so you can go check it out now if you want. It's really quick. Um, and yeah, it will be really helpful. Um, so that's kind of the beginning piece of us, you know, kind of searching for information from vendors throughout the state. Um, I know there's a lot of surveys out there right now, but I promise we'll put it to good use. Um, something that's exciting that we're already, that's already in the works is um, we're going to be, we're planning um, vendor training in Southeast Montana um, in partnership with Healthy by Design. Um, I think Maya's on here. Um, and that will be a virtual training. Um, and the hope is that it will be on April 10th, I think it's a Saturday. So um, hopefully I have a chance for folks um, if you have vendors, if you're in Southeast Montana and have vendors that might be interested, um, I think it'll be a really great training. We'll be focusing on um, tips and tricks around social media platforms and um, um, marketing and booth, your booth setup and um, how to attract um, specific customers to your, um, to your booth and crafting that kind of your message and getting your values across um, just through um, your vendors marketing. Um, so yeah, we're excited about planning that. We'll be um, hopefully have more information and registration link and stuff out soon. Um, but if you are specifically interested in um, you know sending information to your vendors, reach out to me or Tammy and we'll make sure that you, yeah, um, get all the information you need as we that comes available. Um, and I will put my email in the chat in case anyone wants to reach out to me directly. Um, yeah, so that's kind of um, 
the gist of what we're doing, um, lots of things in the works, um, but maybe I'll leave the last few uh, minutes for any questions um, that folks have around um, vendor training and resources. You put in the chat too, or unmute yourself, either way. Uh, Mary, this is Melissa from Columbia Falls Community Market, and we have a variety of vendors. And are you just targeting the farmers? You know, um, Tammy, you can jump in here too. I think there, um, a lot of things we'll be talking about is applicable to anyone. Um, it's, you know, about the, while we, I have my background is in produce producers, you know, and supporting them. Marketing is applicable to a lot of, you know, the topics we'll be talking about, the tools we'll be sharing, I think could be applicable to, to most vendors. Yeah, I would, I would say that um, the, the topics really focus on um, just being a good vendor, um, selling, you know, how to sell, um, who's your customer, um, uh, how to create winning displays, those kinds of things how to know if your products are making money. Um, there's a question from Connie about um, the Boulder market um, definitely has a lot of um, Hutterites that are their main food vendors. And so um, that's a perennial question that we get is like how to get more farmers um, and produce and um, just uh, food outside of the Hutterite colonies as a, um, as, a, as vendors. And um, that is a great, I think that that is an, a tool that we're looking at for farmers market managers. Um, it's been an issue for, especially with the very rural markets, but um, we um, will definitely make sure that is um, one of the tools that we address for farmers market managers. But um, that also goes into creating su successful and winning vendors as well. So thanks for the question and um, comment, Connie. And Tammy, I'm seeing just one other quick question from Sarah about um, the regional training for the Southeast vendors. So maybe just a couple comments about upcoming, like additional regional trainings. Yes, yeah, so they are this, we are doing trainings regionally. So um, they, um, the first one is in the Southeast because um, the actually the Healthy by Design Gardeners Market has um, had already planned to do a vendor specific training. And um, so we are, um, we're, we've just been collaborating with them to, to kick this off, but we will be having um, regional trainings um, throughout the state over the next couple of years. So um, we, it, there will be only, it won't be an annual training like our networking event, but there will be w at least one vendor training um, per region over the next two years. So um, we will be reaching out um, to the farmers markets in specific regions. So in regions, I think of like Southwest, Western, Montana, Northwest, and Central. So those are kind of the regions we're looking at. And um, we, we um, do our best guesstimate to <laughs> um, group farmers markets into those regions. So we'll make sure that we're reaching out to every market in that region. Um, about uh, just um, when is a good time and um, the topics based on um, the vendor surveys that we're doing, so. Great, thanks, Tammy. All right, everyone, um, if you have any additional questions about that, feel free to pop them in the chat, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to um, our next topic, which is uh, with Lindsay Ganong at Alternative Energy Resources Organization, or ARO, um, to share with you some information about the Montana, uh, Abundant Montana Directory. So take it away, Lindsay, thank you. 
Excellent. Thanks, Mara. It's so good to see you all uh, this morning. Still morning for a little bit longer. And I'm really excited to talk about how we can update your market listings for the 2021 season and also uh, some, some new developments in the farmer's market listings and how we're using Abundant as, as a tool. So I'll just jump right in. Abundant Montana is a tool to really educate consumers about the value of local food. And we know that farmers markets are a really key part in that. And we also want um, are working you know, on building a statewide network of local food buyers and sellers so that in the Abundant Montana directory, you uh, customers can come um, and find food that's uh, grown in Montana produced um, processed in Montana and sellers can also use it as a place to connect their customers and I know we saw during the pandemic a lot of consumers realized the value of connecting with their local food system and you all saw that on the ground and you know we want to share that abundant Montana is the go-to place to find local food, learn the tips and tricks about using local food and staying connected to growing local food scenes, you know, that we know that farmers markets are right in the middle of. So when, uh, this is just a quote from one of our listers, I think that Abundant Montana is such a fantastic resource, especially when traveling around Montana, I can look up where to go for amazing local food and products. So uh, it's there for tourists as well. It's there for Montanans who are even outside of, of their local community. So we have over 390 listings uh, that have, uh, we've had a team of folks doing a lot of outreach and data cleaning this year, which has been really exciting. We launched a new website with a new look that I'll give you a quick tour of in just a minute. And then if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of new consumer education out there in those channels. And uh, this year we're gonna be releasing some guides that really direct consumers towards local food sources and connect them with farmer's markets and farmer's market vendors. So we're really trying to build demand for local food through statewide public education. And we wanna help eaters learn about the value of local food, connect them with you all. So you can find us on the website, abundantmontana.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page and Instagram. So I welcome you all to check it out. Oops, I clicked on the link. Sorry about that. But yeah, go, go to our <laughs> go to our Instagram too. Um, I'm gonna have to go back to my slideshow now. <laughs> okay. Great. So new features on Abundant Montana that apply to farmers markets. Uh, we have new search filters where folks can search by county or a group of counties. So I'm going to show you that here uh, just quickly. SNAP and Double SNAP are going to be updated uh, in WIC and Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. That's all going to be part of the Farmers Market Guide that we'll publish this year. Um, so we're working with folks at the state level and, and Ian Finch over at um, Community Food and Ag uh, to to make sure that those are up to date for the season. And now farmers markets can actually list their vendors. Um, and, and if the vendor has, has a, an Abundant Montana account, it will link to their account. So I'm gonna dive in and just show you these features quickly. So when you get to the Abundant Montana site, you wanna click search and then you can choose farmers market listings and then they're listed alphabetically. And Consumers can come and they can search by a county and even another county. And then it will show the listings in both of those counties. So if someone uh, is, wants to check for a regional area, you would just click, keep clicking and adding counties uh, for a region. You can easily just exit out of those if you want to really focus in on one county. And then how to purchase. If you want, um, if you're a SNAP participant, and you want to figure out if SNAP is offered. And we don't have this updated for the 2021 season yet, so we'll see what comes up. Okay, it didn't come up, but and then we can take off the county um, 
and we have one that's registered now. It'll be updated soon. We also have an option for double SNAP dollars retailers too. So folks will be able to um, search by those and we're gonna be adding um, the WIC Farm Direct program. Folks can also come search by product. So if they're looking for baked goods, if they're looking for a market that sells kombucha, um, fruit, you can, you can search by fruit category in general, or you can go more in depth and you can look for one with cherries. So all the farmer's market listings need to be updated uh, with these um, food products for this year. And as market managers, we're gonna look to you to kind of give us a general idea of the types of products and wanna make sure that that's updated on your listing so that the search function works. Um, let me dive into uh, River Valley Farmers Market. So they're an example. Where you can see that they're classified as a farmer's market. So they're searchable under under that filter. There's some nice photos here. A great about section. You can see that in general, you can find baked goods and grains and pulses and oil seeds at that market when it comes to food. Facebook contact information um, and and we need to update the market schedule for the year, which we're looking forward to doing. Um, yeah, so that's a general just tour and then I'm going to show you some slides of the new features that once we get all your listings updated, you'll actually be able to see the vendors as well. Oh, I think I skipped. I see a question, how are you contacting us to update our listing? So I'm, I'm almost there, just two slides and we'll, we'll get to all that. So become a listing partner or update your listing. Abundant Montana is here to help, I'm here to help. You can complete the form electronically and that form went out in uh, the, the email invitation and outreach prior to today's meeting. And we can also schedule a time to just do a verbal entry if you don't want to fill out the, the Google form. Uh, and that's just like, send me a quick email and we'll just get it on the calendar. It takes like 15 minutes. Um, I was able, I, I think three folks have already responded to the form and I got all of their listings updated in like less than an hour. It's really quite a quick process if you just kind of have, are prepared uh, with the information you need. Um, once the basic info is entered, I might need to reach out and ask um, for some of those beautiful photos that you shared uh, early in this presentation. We'd love to get photos um, up and, and just like livening up those listings. And, um, you know, I might just have some follow up questions just to make sure we have really good high quality data, data and that your listings are looking great. How do we know if... I if we, if you got our information, I will reach out as soon as I have a chance um, to review any forms that are submitted. I, I get an automatic ping when a form is completed. And then as soon as I have time, I, I get the listing updated and circle back around. So, you know, if, if you complete a form and haven't heard from me in like a week, then likely something happened um, there, but then, um, pretty quick about getting back to folks and uh, short caveat, I will be out of the office March 10th through the 16th. Uh, but other than that, all spring, we'll be working on getting listings updated. Yeah, we'll, we'll resend all the information in a follow-up, I imagine, after today's presentation. So no worries. No worries there. We'll make sure you have all the information. This year, uh, in 2021, we're asking all the markets to update their listings by April 30th so that we can create a beautiful farmer's market guide that can be shared widely in your communities digitally and uh, to attract new folks to the markets. The guide will have the name of the market, the day of the week, the times, 
Um, and then also whether SNAP, Double SNAP, uh, WIC, Farm Direct, and Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program are offered so that when folks are um, looking for the market that works best for them, they know what benefits are available. So a few quick questions to help us with our planning for developing that farmer's market guide. Mara, if you can launch the polls or Tammy, that's excellent. So how do you plan to update your listing? Uh, complete your, the form on your own, schedule a time to do it with me. Uh, you already did it, which is true for at least three of you, maybe four, I know, so that's excellent. Or you're not quite sure yet. And then second question, when do you expect your vendors to be registered for the 2021 season? And this will just give us an idea of like when we need to circle back um, for outreach uh, for kind of a final list of vendors in your listing. And when will you confirm the dates of your times for the 2021 season? Uh, this will help us understand, you know, our goal is to ship everything uh, to the, all the info for every market to the designer uh, by April 30th. So we get that farmer's market guide ready in time uh, for the season. So our hope is that uh, dates and times can all be confirmed by April 30th. But this, this third poll is just to give us a sense of if that's going to be possible for everyone. Okay, and, and some vendors don't want their info shared and that's, you know, that's totally up to them. So that's okay. If, um, and I'll show you an example, like you just saw an example in the tour of one without vendor listings. If no vendors are entered, then that will, it just won't show up on the listing. So it's no worries. All right, I, 81% of folks have voted I and, uh, the votes coming in have kind of slowed. So I think we can end the poll. And folks should be able to kind of see the results. Looks like for, for most folks, uh, we'll know by April 30th uh, in, in for the guide. And um, yet we might need to do some outreach yet in May uh, to get vendors registered. Um, very good. And most folks are comfortable completing the form on your own. Uh, just know I'm here to help. I'm just an email away, a phone call away, uh, if anything comes up. And, and I'm really excited to get these, um, these listings updated. So thanks all for participating in the polls. Just a few slides left. Um, here, I just wanted to point out that your um, the name of the market is here, the actual location, and then an about section. Uh, River Valley did a great job of listing, you know, what are the types of things you can find at, at their market? Uh, they, they listed the, the goal of the market, which is, is a really nice increased access to local fresh food, promote local businesses, highlight local artisans. So they're letting folks know it's, it's a craft, it's an artisan market, and there's food available. I think that's something that customers are really looking for. Um, they provide health education, connect families to needed services. So also as a res resource connector. And I think that's pretty common um, in terms of roles of our farmers market. So it's certainly something that you can point out here in your listing. The types of activities, um, the snap and double snap, but we'll we'll also make sure beyond uh, your listing here that farther down um, there's going to be a section that says payment types, and then it will have the options are cash, credit, check, snap, double snap, WIC, Farm Direct, Senior Farmers Market Nutrition. So we will um, those will be showing front facing on your listing and it'll also be searchable for folks and you'll just it's just a checkbox on on your registration form uh 
this is also a place where the online market here is a button where you can personalize it. So if you have merch that you sell, if you have an online events calendar, we can personalize that button to be an online market, um, shop, farmer's market gear, whatever you have available, however you want to personalize it, we can highlight what's important to your market there. Then there's place for photos, the map, and then also these tags uh, that kind of let folks know more about uh, the, the listing and also uh, our, our search filters that people can search with. So I know I'm already over time, so I was hoping to have a discussion about what makes a good farmer's market listing, uh, but really consider when you're writing your about section, a description of the location, you know, if it's, in the park, by the river, if there are good shade trees, like these are all really welcoming things that will draw customers in. Uh, the types of vendors, let folks know, are, are there food vendors here? Are there craft? Can you, can you buy a meal ready to eat? All of those kinds of things. And then the features that make the market unique, is it family friendly? Um, can you access other resources there? And what's the mission, mission, vision, and goals of the market? Is it, is it meant to be an event or is it meant to be a, a quick place to come and grab um, local food, you know, or some combination of all those? And then the health and safety measures are also something that I think customers are particularly interested in. Um, and here is one example. I, I just wrote a test in, 20, in 2021. We continue to follow health and safety measures and then a bulleted list. I think that's something that could be really, really helpful to customers when they're, um, you know, preparing to come out to the market. And it's something we can update throughout the season super easily. You know, you would just email me updates. So no harm in, in putting it up there uh, for what's going to be true at the beginning of the season. And then we can always update it later in the season if things change. And that completes it. So I'm happy to answer any questions if we have just a moment. Lindsay, it looks like there's one question from Tammy about examples of these examples that you showed for us to share. So maybe if you could. I mean, I, yeah, I the copies. folks go to Abundant Montana, click on farmer's markets, click on all the markets and, and read what you like, um, weigh the pros and cons and, and write an about section that really draws folks to your market. Good. Well, I look forward to working uh, with you all in the coming months and, and getting those listings, listings updated for the season and getting a beautiful farmer's market guide out. So thanks for all you're doing and, and making sure local food's available in so many places across Montana. It's great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I know a lot of um, a lot of market managers appreciate that one-stop shop for for listing, and that's been um, something that our the managers have um, and operators have appreciated and the, now the new vendor listing is also a big bonus. So yeah, we'll be sending those out, um, the link out in the follow-up resources on Monday. So, um, so if everybody could put themselves in gallery view again, and um, I just wanted to, ask you all, um, I had mentioned earlier that we will be doing, um, working with the University of Montana to create a, a, a study and a, ultimately a report on the impact of farmers markets on Montana's local economy. Um, I know this was done a, a long, long time ago, but we just feel like um, it's relevant and important now, um, but we want, I wanted to ask you how a report like this can support you at the local level. And um, what are some of the important questions that will help support you there? Um, I'm going to start off by quoting the, the person that's um, 
going to be helping out with the study, John Baldridge. He couldn't make it today, um, but um, he he's framing it as you know what would be the impact if there actually wasn't a farmer's market in your community um but i want to hear from you on um how can we make this report impactful at the not only the state level to help garner support and resources for um all of you as market operators but um also you at the local level to garner community and um, support and, and leverage resources at the local level. And let's just do it popcorn style. You can put something in the chat or you can just um, feel free to pipe up. In Eureka, we have lots of support. I mean, we moved it from down by the river up to the middle of town and we are busier than they've ever been. So, um, but the one thing I see is we have a lot of people coming in with snap and double snap that they didn't have before. So something about the, the impact of um, like food access programs on the community. Sarah, are you talking? Because um, you're muted. I see your yeah, mouth. Sorry, I am. Um, yeah, just having those metrics to use when like applying for different programs um, would just be so helpful to have something really tangible like that. Um, we are part of a nonprofit. Um, so yeah, things like that just help us get more funding and um, outreach that way. So. for us one of the things that we were just talking about is you know it's good to like see how it trickles down like we had a a federal um report that talked about snap and double snap and that was really great to see how our market fit into that national landscape and so i think it like a report like this could be um interesting and helpful and like then again how does a small market like ours fit into like a state landscape as something bigger that then helps um, kind of reiterate the message that our market is important um, for, for the state and federal levels too, as well as our community. So I became the president of the market last July and so my focus was to take care of the existing vendors and every single one of those vendors were super appreciative of us staying open. And we had um, 15 different bands that couldn't play. So we paid them full payment um, and they were super appreciative. We had 15 different breweries, 15 different distilleries. 54 different vendors and seven different employees that were just so over the moon that we stayed open for them. And so I can only speak on the vendors, but they were, they had a really hard year last year and they just didn't have anywhere else to sell their, their products or play. So Yeah, so um, Melissa, do you mind just saying what market you're from? I, actually, if everybody, if you don't mind when you're saying something, just say what market you're from. <laughs> I'm with the Columbia Falls Community Market. Okay, great. Yeah, so you're saying, you know, um, uh, a, a place to sell products when, um, when other market channels may be disrupted, when there's disruptions in the supply chain. And then um, Julie, I see, um, was saying that their their market has become a business incubator. So, like, how um, how many new businesses are created with um, with farmers markets in the community? And I think I saw Connie talking, really, <laughs> but no. Oh no, okay. <laughs> 
Um, oh, the health impacts, um, uh, I guess at the Sealy Lake Market, um, yeah, the, the health impact by having local foods, um, access to local foods, especially in a time like last year. Great. These are great. Also, um, I found that our farmer's market provided all of our vendors with an extra um, very needed support for promoting their own CSA programs in addition to their farmer's market sales. So expanding, how can the market expand um, to other uh, marketing channels, be used as a launching pad for other market channels? Great. Any other last, last thoughts? Um, wait, oh, I'm seeing Terry from Helena. We would like to have a good idea of how many customers we have during our market. Um, oh, oh, yeah, great, Terry. That's um, what we are planning on doing um, uh, customer counts and we can also give you some tools to do really simple customer counts. And um, if this is the Saturday Helena market, that was one of the markets that we did customer counts with in our last uh, farmer's market promotional project. So I actually visited that market in 2019. So Terry, I can touch base with you about um, the numbers that we have that we did um, and be happy to share that with you after the meeting. Hey, Tammy, there more? Yes. Hey, Jason. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a good time to talk about the online farmer's market model, or is there a better time we can talk? I was, I was thinking, so at the end of this, um, we are planning on doing uh, like a, a goal, um, and everybody, I would like, st I would like for you to start thinking about like the one goal that one goal that you might have um, and how for 2021 and how um, the market network, your peers or this team of partners can help you accomplish that. So that's um, what we'll be doing towards the end. And I did have a question about like the um, a market um, online selling platform as one of the, the ideas there. Um, so we can talk about that then. I don't, let me see where we are in our agenda. Yeah, so we, we should probably move on to the mentoring piece. So yeah, hold tight to that, that one, Jason, and we'll have you share that um, at the end, okay? This okay, is, sounds good. This is Terry Johnson from Helena. Can I insert one more question? Is it, is it the uh, University of Montana Bureau of Business that's going to do the, the, the analysis for you? Yes, it is, Terry. Okay. And are they actually going to do a survey? Is that kind of the plan? or? There is several different um, uh, things they're going to be doing. One of them is a survey, but actually going, um, sending folks out to uh, a representative sample of farmers markets um, in terms of location, number of vendors, um, rural, urban, um, and then uh, from that representative sample, just really digging into some of the data, like the customer accounts, the number of vendors. We're going to ask some of you to um, uh, see if we can get some vendor um, sales data because that really contributes a lot to the economic, um, the knowledge of an economic impact, right? <laughs> like yeah. how many, um, so those, those types of things um, are that, what we're, what, what, when I, in the beginning, when I asked um, how we, um, what we need from you, those are some things that we're going to be asking some of you to participate in. I, I know in, in our particular case from the Helena market, we had a, you know, our board actually had a discussion about the possibility of 
going out and polling our vendors to get some idea of the, you know, the metrics in terms of sales. And um, we had kind of a mixed review from our board members. Some thought it was a good idea and some thought it was uh, not a good idea. So it is a challenge, but I think it would be just incredibly good information to have. And one, one other point I would make is uh, there is a, I, I can't remember exactly their name, but it's their uh, research center for tourism. It's not, it's part of, uh, I think it's part of their forestry division. It's kind of a strange arrangement, but they do a, a, uh, an actual poll. I don't even know if it's a poll. It's a, it's a survey that they go around throughout Montana uh, where they survey the number of tourists that uh, come into Montana on an annual basis. And if you go out to their website, it actually gives, gives the user an estimate of how much uh, is spent by tourists for farmers markets in the various communities. And uh, I know like in the case of Helena, uh, their estimate is, I want to say, like $72,000 a season that's spent just by tourism uh, in the Helena Farmer's Market. So uh, that's another valuable piece of information, for, uh, especially those communities that that are impacted a lot by tourism. Yeah, that, that's great. I'll look into that, Terry, and, and definitely make sure BBER is, I'm, I'm assuming they, they are familiar with with that yes. um, metric. So, um, sure. yeah, so we, we also, now we're going to, um, if you have any other ideas or, or um, uh, questions that seem relevant um, to this study, please put them in the chat or feel free to email me. Um, we're getting started on that um, this season. And um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mara, who's going to talk about some of the technical assistance opportunities through this pro through our program. Okay, great. Thank you, Tammy. Um, all right, everyone. I just want to share a little bit of information with you all about accessing technical assistance and our new market mentor program. Um, this, uh, the technical assistance is an important piece of our sustaining farmers market success project. And first, I want to just start off with, you know, what exactly is technical assistance? Um, well, essentially, technical assistance is any help or advice given by NCAT or our partners to all of you. So questions about starting a farmer's market, farmer's market legal resources, becoming SNAP authorized, uh, tips for selling at farmer's markets, or even as uh, Terry asked, um, resources on obtaining market metrics, customer counts, and things like that are all things that we can provide guidance on. Uh, how to access this assistance? Um, simply just call or email Tammy or myself directly, and we will either respond to you or refer your question to one of our awesome partners at CFAC or Montana Department of Ag or one of the mentor markets. If we cannot answer your question, we will then reach out to our nationwide network of partners, which include our friends at the Farmers Market Coalition. So we are excited to announce that as part of this new Sustaining Farmers Market Success Project, we can include two farmers markets to help provide mentoring and technical assistance to other markets in the state. Our two markets are here to introduce themselves today and provide a little information about how their markets uh, can help you in their areas of expertise. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and hand it over to our first market, which is uh, Healthy by Design. 
Thanks, Maura. Um, my name is Maya Dickerson, and I'm here with the Eden Sowards, and we are um, working on behalf of the Healthy by Design Coalition for the um, Gardener's Market that happens at South Park on Thursdays from 4.30 to 6.30, June through October, in Billing. So the Gardener's Market is one of um, a few markets in Yellowstone County, but we're the only market that does SNAP um, that accepts SNAP, double SNAP, as well as trains vendors on accepting WIC coupons and Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program coupons. So we have a really robust um, uh, incentive and incentive program and really try to um, help our customers expand their dollars because we are a mission-driven uh, market. Our market is on the south side of Billings, which is predominantly low income. And the purpose of our market, our market is really, really mission driven. And um, through the Healthy by Design Coalition, which is a health coalition, which is really trying to provide more healthy food access to those people that need it. And that is part of our community health improvement plan that we have in Yellowstone County. Um, so, so I guess uh, Maura asked to kind of talk a little bit about our expertise and about our market and how we could help other markets. And I would say um, some of the stuff that we've been really working on is vendor recruitment and vendor relations. And so we have a vendor committee now that's going on its second year. So really incorporating vendor feedback on our market operations, as well as um, community um, buy-in and community um, partnerships and how can we get more cooking demonstrations and things like that that maybe help our customers know how to use the food that they're getting at the markets better and how to, how to stretch those, um, their dollars more easily with, with the fresh produce that they are getting. I'll also say that um, your contact, you, you guys will have the market contact, but Eden will be the one that will be um, corresponding with you um, as I am leaving the market manager position for the season, but she has been at the market for a number of years and will be really able to step in and, and really um, help your markets if you guys have any questions. Great, great, Maya. All right, um, and then next up we have Samantha. Hello, thank you. Um, my name is Samantha O'Byrne. I'm the executive director of the O'Hara Commons in Hamilton, Montana. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. Our mission is connecting local people with local food. And we do this through education, resource sharing, demonstration gardens, and our farmers markets. So for the past five years, we've had a Wednesday afternoon farmers market. Um, that is a SNAP, double SNAP, senior coupon um, um, accessible market. Um, this past year, we were able to follow the um, Montana Farmers Market Network and CDC standards for uh, COVID protocol, and we had a huge success. Um, of course, it was our fifth year, uh, pardon me, it was our fourth year last year, so obviously we would be seeing our foot traffic increase, but it increased, uh, it over doubled last year because of the safety provisions that we provided to um, our, our um, visitors. Um, in addition to that, we have an online local foods market that we initiated in October, and that has been an incredible success. Um, it's been really exciting to actually be able to see some of those numbers that are um, maybe not so easy to find in a, a standard farmer's market. Um, so we are really looking forward to the next couple of years and this partnership and um, the experience that we bring. A lot of experience on platforms, um, um, Farmers market design, vendor outreach, um, and retention. And uh, we look forward to um, being able to build this network. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Samantha, Maya, and Eden. We're so excited to have you as our mentor markets for this project. Um, and again, folks, if you are looking to access technical assistance, you can just email myself or Tammy Howard. Um, I'm sure you have our email by this time, but we'll make sure that all, all of that's included in uh, the follow-up uh, correspondence as well. So, all right, I'm gonna hand this back over to Tammy. 
Thanks. Yeah, the mentoring, um, we're super excited just because it, it's, um, we just like I working with so much with farmers over the past um, 25 years or so, um, you know, farmers learn best from other farmers. I think that is also the case with market managers, right? Um, you're, you're in the trenches and working um, and um, on the day to day. And um, so we're excited to have um, a couple of mentors helping you out. So yeah, please feel free to reach out with questions. Um, and um, so now I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna introduce our next person um, that's talking. M Marty is from the Montana Department of Agriculture. They've been a strong partner with us for many years and especially in this last project and they were um, instrumental in creating a farmer's market portal. And I'm going to share my screen right now. And, um, and then Marty will talk you through um, the farmer's market portal and we'll have a few more questions for you um, through a polling. Can y'all see that? Okay. Okay, hello everyone. Like Tammy said, I'm Marty Earnhardt with the Montana Department of Agriculture. I'm a marketing officer in our development bureau. Uh, Tammy, did you want, it, want me to talk about a GTA program real quick or just go straight to this? Feel free to um, mention those as resources for sure, but we'll make sure they're in the follow-up resource document. Okay, excellent. Well, so, okay, so we'll just start. So uh, part of what we did with this, with this project is the farmer's market portal. Um, and so what we're really trying to figure out today is, you know, if you've accessed it, if you know about it, and if it's useful. And what we would like to do is put together a committee of farmer's markets managers and, and others to really make this uh, portal a really robust uh, website. So how to, it's hosted on the Montana Department of Agriculture website. So you just go to our agr.mt.gov website. You then go to topics and then you go down to farmers markets. And then in this is kind of some general information that we have uh, about farmers markets. Um, we have links to Arrows Abundant Montana um, website here, some other things. But if you go to the bottom of this page is where you'll find the link to get into the portal. So this is the portal and we are still, we're working on updating it. Um, right now we're, our department is switching over to a completely new um, program and so for our internet. And so we're in the mix of switching things over. Uh, so you might find some things right now that aren't up to date, but we are working on, on updating the links um, in these, in this portal, but, um, over to the right hand side, you can kind of see the, the menu here and all of the things that we have. And then if you go down, um, go down the page, then you'll see all of those uh, links there as well. And so, and, and Tammy, I think maybe now we can just do the questionnaire just because uh, I'm just really curious to see, you know, how many people have have accessed the portal and if they have what they've thought about it. So we'll just give everyone a second to. So the first question is, have you heard of the farmers markets portal? The second question is, how often do you visit the portal? Um, this this one I thought was really important because you know, if it's just a one time thing, we want to make it so that it's something that we have new and fresh information up all the time. Um, so that's why I wanted to ask that question. And number three is, if you visited the portal, did you find the information useful? 
Um, when I was going through it, I thought maybe there's there was a little too much and it got a little overwhelming, but I'm curious to see what everyone thinks on that. And then the fourth question is, please give your overall feeling about the content of the portal. Um, and then please be thinking about as you go through these, if you would like to serve on the committee to um, to really go through the portal and make it the best that we can. Uh, so Tammy, I don't, I can't see the results of those. So I might have you. Yeah, so um, it looks like we need to do some more outreach about the portal because um, about right now I'm seeing oh, about half, um, more than half have not heard of the portal and um, like, over two thirds, um, 63%, um, about two thirds have, have not visited the portal. Um, and so, yeah, we've got to do some more outreach on um, making it um, a resource for all of you. And then, um, and then, you know, some somewhat useful, um, you know, or, it's kind of a toss up um, on how how useful it has been. <laughs> um, okay. Most people tend to use it sporad that use it are sporadically like forty percent, maybe five five times a year. So, okay. um, yeah. So um, we will be what the way we're asking folks to be part of the review committee. I'm going to share the results just so everybody can see. Um, is that we want uh, you know we have like just a short survey, but what we want folks to do is kind of look through the, the portal um, and, um, at, and have folks um, let us know what is useful, what's not, what we need to have on there that's not. So that's, um, it wouldn't be <clears throat> more than um, a couple hours of your time, but we all are also offering stipends for your participation in the portal review committee. So just so we know, because we know your, your time is valuable. Okay, I'll stop sharing here. So yeah, again, we're just hoping to get um, folks um, involved in creating a really useful toolbox or list of uh, uh, group of materials. So again, please just get back with us or you can put your name in the, the chat too. So, um, and any questions for Marty? That makes it easy. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Well, those of you who haven't checked it out, please go check it out. We'll make sure it's in the, listed in the list of resources. Um, okay. Well, um, next on the roster, um, Ian is going to be talking about double snap dollars. I know a lot of um, markets on this, um, this networking meeting are part of the double snap dollars network, but um, even if you aren't a participant in SNAP and Double Snap Dollars, it's great to um, know about the network and, um, and if, if customers that you um, want to know if you accept SNAP um, and you don't, you could definitely um, make sure that you bookmark this um, Double Snap Dollars website that he's going to share with us. Thanks so much, Tammy, and hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. It's so nice to see everyone's faces. Um, and I see a lot of names, actually, that I don't recognize. So I was expecting quite a few markets to have Double Snap already, as Tammy was saying, and I think I see quite a few that maybe don't. And I was actually just wondering, so I can get a read for the room, there's a little spot down at the bottom where it's called Reactions. And if you do not have a Double Snap Dollars program at your market, I'm looking for just a thumbs up. I'm curious on how many people in this room are not familiar with this program yet. Awesome, so there are some thumbs up, thank you. Um, it's just good to know that I'm talking to some people that uh, just you know might be looking for some more information because I'll go over 
how the program actually works and some of our impacts, and then show you our new website, which you can all use as a resource. So I'm gonna share my screen. And how's it looking? Can people see the presentation on here? Awesome. So again, uh, Double SNAP Dollars is a nutrition incentive program, and basically what that means is that we match SNAP funding, which is food stamps, for people that are shopping at your farmer's markets. And what's really cool about this is that although it's a food access program and that we are you know, tailoring the program so that low-income community members can actually access this locally produced food, it's more of a pass-through of an economic stimulus where we're also looking to support your vendors and your markets through these programs by bringing additional customers to your market um, through these food access programs. So how does this thing work? Um, you can see here on the screen, this is what the new Montana EBT card looks like. It got updated this year. And for this program at your farmer's markets, Double Snap will match dollar for dollar SNAP funding up to $20 per day for your customers. And if you have any you know, questions about how many SNAP users are in your county or your community, CPAC can certainly help you get that information. What's cool about it too is that we partner with the SNAP education program in the state through Montana State University Extension. And so if your county has a SNAP educator and a SNAP customer is taking one of their nutrition classes, they actually get an additional $20 voucher for double SNAP dollars to go shopping at your market. So for those people, they're doing, they can do $20 in EBT, $20 in double SNAP, they'll get an additional $20 in SNAP egg coupons. So we'll have a $60 shopping trip at your farmer's market, all based off of the original $20 that they were gonna spend in EBT. So it's actually quite a good expansion of stretching their food dollars to get more fresh fruits and produce at your market, but also supporting your market more. Um, one distinction that I'd like to make, and this is important information for your vendors at their tables, is that SNAP can basically buy all foods, you know, bread, milk, honey, cheeses, that kind of stuff. Double SNAP dollars is only eligible for fruits and vegetables. So if you have a vendor that's selling both, they can still take the tokens or vouchers, whatever your market comes up with. Um, but if they're not selling any fruits or vegetables, herbs, mushrooms, um, even like uh, seeds and bedding plants qualify, if they're not selling those, then they cannot accept double SNAP dollars coupons at your markets. And why are we doing this? Um, I just wanted to throw a couple little data points at you all. I know we're getting towards the end, so maybe it's hard to read words on a screen at this point. But uh, the pandemic has really increased food insecurity in the state. And the Montana Food Bank Network um, is predicting that 30, 32,000 more people in Montana are at risk of hunger um, as a result of the pandemic, which is about a 30% increase. Um, and so we're looking nationally that one in five households are food insecure. In Montana alone, 107,000 people in Montana are on SNAP benefits. And so what that means is that we have um, these households with children and individuals shopping with SNAP for $12 million a month. So the state alone redeems $12 million in SNAP every month. And so that's kind of this huge pocket of money that we are working with, where if we can match that money, this program could get really big. We don't have the funding for that yet, but that's kind of the, the potential, the capacity that we're looking at. And um, because our program specifically targets locally grown produce to infuse money into the local economy, it really does look at, at benefiting your vendors, your farmers and your markets themselves. On top of that, um, specific economic research studies looking at SNAP and nutrition incentives have found that it's a 1.5 to 1.8 multiplier effect. What that's saying is that when a person comes and spends that SNAP dollar at your market, vendors, your market people are then respending that money in the community. And so it multiplies so that it actually has a larger effect. And I'll get into that a little bit in a second. Um, just our program impact since the beginning, we do have 26 markets now across Montana. You can see on the little map, it's represented by a star. You can see there are still large regions missing here in central Montana and eastern Montana. So if you have markets, if you guys are markets in these regions, please contact us and let us know. Um, we want to get you involved in the program and we want to extend our reach to rural and native communities throughout the state as a general direction for where the program is headed. Um, but you can see on here, you know, in Montana, we have a lot of small farms that are selling fruits and vegetables. Um, nearly 50% of farms in Montana are under 180 acres. Those are the farmers that we're looking to support through the Double Snap Dollars program, and they're also the vendors that are selling through your markets. 
Um, families alone since 2015, Double Snap has supported 6,600 Montanans in accessing more fruits and vegetables to increase their uh, nutrition and their diets. Um, and 96% of people in our evaluation said that the program does indeed increase the amount of vegetables and produce that they're consuming and also the variety of fruits and vegetables that they're consuming. So it really is going back to impact people's health. So we have children who can be better learners, we have seniors who can extend um, their lives and their health benefits by eating better. Um, and then the economy, of course, as I was saying earlier, you know, the economic impact um, in the last five, six years, our program has returned half a million dollars to the state's uh, local food economy. And with those economic multipliers, that's representing almost $900,000. And so we're going to get to a million dollars with this multiplier next year. Um, and that's kind of the impact that we're saying to funders, to our legislators, this is the impact that the program can have. So all of this information you can use too for your local community foundations. If you're looking for support for different programs or for Farmers Market Week, um, you know, we can get this data for you for your local communities as well. Um, and just for instance, in Missoula County alone last year, and I saw Meredith on here, so you were really contributing to this. Um, we have several markets uh, that are participating just in this county, but just in Missoula County last year, we supported almost 800 individual shoppers that are going to the farmer's markets. They spent 31,000 in SNAP. We matched most of it because most people kind of plan their shopping around the doubling. And so they do typically 20 in SNAP, 20 in double SNAP. Um, so combined that's $60,000 in this federal food assistance money going to our farmer's markets for a total economic impact in one county alone of $100,000. And so, you know, this is information that for your local communities, we can help you put together a snapshot like this so that you can take this to your funders or to your representatives to get more support for your farmers market. And um, I just wanted to show you our new website really quick. Uh, we just published it this year. It has a bunch of information on it about how to access the program. Um, just first off with locations, you know, you can send people to doubledollarsmontana.com. We have our own little map. This will kind of interface with that Abundant Montana directory too. Um, but for now, you can go straight to our website and we have all of our double uh, SNAP dollars locations listed on here. You can zoom in on them, you can click on them and these links lead directly to your market's website. Um, so people can go straight through our portal to get to you. We have information on here about how the program works. Um, it should be easy to digest with simple, easy steps. Um, you know, market or customers visit your market, they swipe their EBT card, you write down how much they took out, you match it up to $20 and write that down on the data sheet, and then they can just go shopping with their tokens. So it's, we want to make it as straightforward as possible and easy for markets to process, um, you know, these transactions and to also get us the data. Um, we have frequently asked questions. Um, what can I buy with double snap? What can I buy with regular snap? People can go to this site to just learn more about how to actually use the program, how people can sign up, if tokens expire, those kinds of important questions. So if you're curious about the program too, I encourage you to visit the site and look at these frequently asked questions for more information. Um, and then we were just looking at the farmer's market portal, which I think is an awesome resource for um, going to get information about our program and the resources that we have. We're also developing a resource section on this website so that it's all contained um, here. You can come here for posters and flyers to help market your program. Um, and we'll have more information coming soon. And then the final piece that I wanted to say, Mara was talking earlier about technical assistance that we are able to provide through the Farmers Market Promotion Program, uh, Sustaining Farmers Market Success Program. And you can come here to our website and we have these resources for you on how to access the Food Nutrition Services EBT website to get more information about how to be SNAP authorized, more information about how to get grant programs for equipment. And I'll just say with this last slide here in the presentation, um, between myself and my coworker Shay, we're offering technical assistance to your markets and to your vendors for getting EBT and SNAP authorized for then, you know, that's the initial step. And then after that, we'll help your market and farmers get double SNAP authorized. 
And um, there's the other ones too that Lindsay was talking about. There's uh, Farmers Market WIC and Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. We don't um, work on or house those programs at CFAC, but we do have great contacts with those programs. So if you're interested in those as well, we can refer you to those programs. Um, and Tammy herself is kind of an EBT SNAP pro for years. So if you have better contact through this network to go through her, she can either refer you to us or refer you to those other programs as well. Um, and I think I just sped right through my presentation. Um, there are a couple minutes left and I think that the best information comes from you all. Um, and so if anyone wants to take themselves off mute and share something you did last year with the program, or if people wanna just go ahead and put some ideas they had into the chat, I always love hearing from people on what they did with their programs um, and how they made them successful. Ian, this is Blanche with Eureka's Farmer's Market. Our big problem with the SNAP and double SNAP is we don't have a strong internet section in our where we have our market. So we're having to use the phone, you know, get it, get it uh, authorized. And then we have to take it back the next day to our office and do it. There, right. Is it possible to get something like the square that people use to do credit cards? Is it something possible to do something like that for these markets that are more rural and their internet's not real handy? Absolutely. And, and Tammy can speak more to this as well. I see she took herself off mute. Yeah. Yeah. There is actually um, a grant program and I know a lot of markets that are interested in becoming authorized and um, accepting SNAP. The equipment is always like the biggest challenge and hurdle. And, um, and so there is a grant program through Market Link, and I will put this in the um, chat. And that is to um, get basically a, a square that processes SNAP cards. And if you're just doing SNAP only, um, it, it's a it's a year long grant for the um, for the square and all of the the fees associated. And then after the the first year, it's twenty dollars a month for a month to month contract with them. So it's pretty affordable. Um, and that's just for SNAP only. So if you're accepting debit and credit, the fees might be a little bit more, um, but you have to bring your own device basically to that program. And that can be a challenge because you're paying your fees and everything um, what, or data fees um, with a cell, cell phone. But a lot of markets, that's, that's what's working in Montana, unfortunately. Um, and um, the other uh, equipment options, um, we've struggled to find something with the, the state uh, Department of Health and Human Services um, in terms of like the um, SNAP only wireless equipment grants. We just can't come to a resolution with those folks. We've been working for about a year um, with them. And so um, that's the equipment grant program I've been pointing folks to. The one problem with what the way we do it, if we get the funds uh, approved and that person, let's say they're getting $20 and they have like $40 and they go to the grocery store and spend $40, then by, by the next day when I go to ru run the card, she has no money. So then we have to be inventive. So uh, it would be very beneficial if we had something like that. So I might get with you to see about getting that information. Sure. And if yeah, if you have Square already, I think you can just download the Total Pay app and it's an additional subscription fee, but you can use your existing equipment. Anyone else, any big challenges that you'd like to share or great successes with the group? Uh, uh, hi, and um, as I said earlier, the Hutterites um, are our major food providers. We occasionally have a farmer drop in and have a few things, um, but they're not part of our farmer's market. Um, they have their own business license. They have their own business. We have our farmer's market on the same day that they're there. And lots of people have asked him if he... Uh, couldn't have this program 
And he has asked me why I don't have the program in the farmer's market for him. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't think it works that way. Um, so if, if he pays his uh, $5 vendor fee to me, then he's part of my farmer's market, right? So then am I eligible to do all the work to set up SNAP for people to benefit from his produce? Does that sound convoluted or does it work? <laughs> I think it makes sense for him to become individually uh, authorized to accept SNAP. And we're working with a lot of vendors that to become authorized because then they can accept it through their CSA program and other programs. And that's part of the vendor support. That's another part of our vendor support that we're working on is having them become authorized individually. And especially if he's the only one that is has is selling a snap authorized or a snap eligible item at your market connie one of the things we do in eureka is we made little little dowels and they're they're just basically pieces of of a limb that we cut off and we have a one a two and a five on them and the people that come in for snap we give them them if they do double snap we've got orange coins and then at the end of the day the vendors come to us and we pay them the cash for those things. That eliminates them having to go. A lot of them are just, you know, local farmers and they don't want to get onto the SNAP thing. So that's a way that our market does it so that we are responsible for it. But we also, they, at the end of the day, they have cash, green cash in their hands and we have the money back. Um, I also want to open it up because we have like, you know, just 10 more minutes and um, I, I want to, um, you know, popcorn style, um, your, your one goal for the, um, for this 20, upcoming 2021 season. It's been, um, you know, it's been a great two and a half hours, but I wanted to close with you all sharing um, what you want, what is that one thing you want to accomplish that either our network, our peer group, um, our technical assistance providers um, can, can help you accomplish this year? I would just like to say we um, ran our online market last year for the first year, and we would like to continue it, but we'd like to encourage more vendors to participate. And I wondered if anybody had any great ideas for enticing more vendors to sign up for the online market. We in your we in Eureka would like to be maybe be interested on the online. I didn't know anything about that, but we'd like to see more vendors. I think is our big thing. This is Meredith. Hi, everybody. I'm from Missoula Farmers Market. And gosh, last year was my first year as the manager of the market and COVID and oh my gosh. But uh, one thing that, that we thought was very important was getting our online, you know, getting the online market going. And, you know, it was really important to have that option for, for shoppers. Um, one thing that I tried to offer, <clears throat> excuse me, was to really help the vendors get set up with the program. I think that is the biggest barrier to the, you know, to some folks that maybe don't, aren't super computer savvy. So, you know, like if they would send me, <clears throat> excuse me, send me their product list and their photos, um, then I could actually get those products up on the site for them, you know, kind of help them build their profile. Uh, and then it's, it's easier for them to maintain, you know, once it's all set up. So if you have the capacity to provide a little bit more support and uh, technical assistance to, to the vendors, particularly as they get it set up, I think they're, they're more likely to want to participate and, you know, kind of take that leap. That is something uh, that O'Hara Commons did with the online uh, local foods market that we've developed. And basically we, we make it requisite that we set everything up for the uniformity to make the actual storefront much more um, consumer friendly. Um, so keeping 
keeping that set up, I think, is a really good idea um, at the onset, and then letting them maintain their inventory thereafter is really helpful for everybody. This, this is Terry Johnson again from Helena. Did for those of you that set up an online uh, process, did did your market actually uh, incur the costs of doing that, or how did that work? Yes, um, in Missoula, yeah, we we paid for it, um, the setup and the the maintenance fee. You know, we have a monthly fee. And we do charge, you know, a small percentage over and above what the, the vendors charge. But honestly, I think we need to raise that a little bit to help cover the, you know, the time it takes to run it. So, so did, you, did you actually hire somebody uh, to, to develop a, like a website for an on, online storefront? Or, or did you try and do that yourself? Or how, how did you do that? Yeah, so um, Local Food Marketplace is who we use, and I believe that um, that y'all, that NCAT has a relationship with them, and they're fantastic, and um, I know that the Clark Fork River Market, which is also in Missoula, which is actually much larger than ours, um, they also use that platform, and I highly recommend them. They're fantastic. Uh, you know, and I think, honestly, the more... I don't know. The more uniform across the state, probably it's better too. I don't know. But um, yeah, I would definitely wouldn't want to try to develop one. They have it really lined out very well. So highly recommend. O'Hara Commons also uses the local food marketplace platform. And um, the one thing that I did before we set up the online market was I went to other people who have had experience with online local food markets, farmers markets and uh, really heeded their guidance. And the one thing that I walked away from, from the mentoring that I received was, it's really important to not um, underestimate the human capacity and the expense of running an online local food market. And O'Hara Commons had our vendors actually encourage us to make sure that since we were putting so many resources into developing this resource, they wanted it to, to um, be viable in the long run. And so we actually do charge almost exclusively. We do make some exce exceptions, but we do a 30% grocery store markup um, over the base price of the vendors. And they know that at the onset, we have an onboarding letter that we send out to all of the vendors, um, which really helps them understand um, why we need to charge that, that amount. And I have not had I've only had one vendor feel like um, it was too much, um, but they were creating a um, value added item and they weren't purchasing at wholesale themselves. So their expenses were high to start with and it made their product really um, not affordable. J Jason, do you wanna talk about your platform as well? Just really quick since we're on the, t the topic. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Jason Moore, and I've been the president of, president of the Montana Co-op for nine years. And when we started, we were all about developing this online farmers market to serve the state. So we've been on this big big picture plan mission. Um, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so part of the problem with that is we haven't been able to really focus on the little things and keep them going consistently, but we did run the online market for three and a half years, uh, starting off 2011. Uh, we have about 250 members that were all ordering online. We had about 30 to 40 uh, weekly uh, orders. Uh, <clears throat> but what we did is um, early on, we went down and visited the Oklahoma Food Co-op that started the online market, and they made their software as open source. and. Uh, we went down, spent some time with them. We got to understand the system, the transportation, uh, the ordering. Uh, it made a lot of sense. Uh, we came back, made a few adjustments and changes, and then we launched uh, the Montana Co-op in 2012. And we uh, worked at for about uh, three years. Mission Mountain Food Enterprise Center was our main sorting site. So the neat thing with this market is all the transportation happens in one day <clears throat> because everything is pre-ordered. So it doesn't sit in any uh, trucks or warehouses. 
it goes directly from the producer to the consumer on the same day. And uh, we've got a plan on how to service the whole state. Uh, we learned, learned it from Oklahoma uh, 15 years ago, but they've just recently went out of business, Oklahoma Food Co-op. So some of the things that they did that we changed, hopefully would make it, will make a difference. Um, so look forward to maybe having a sort of a subcommittee that we can really look at this as a collective impact effort and uh, all come together. Uh, we've been using local food marketplace software since the beginning uh, for nine, nine years. Um, we you know, only actually were using it in our business for about three years, but we never let it go. We've always been part of the learning about the upgrades. And, and now with those upgrades, each market, so each local farmer's market can launch an online market, but still be part of this bigger uh, market so that we, we can exchange product between, <clears throat> between areas of Montana. And then you can choose what you want in your market. So if you don't want to market a farmer up in the Flathead and you're down in Hamilton, you don't have to bring that farmer into your market. So Local Food Marketplace has done a great job. We've been on the same picture with them about being able to support this sort of statewide, even regional in one market instead of everybody having their own markets. So, and that's going to save us all a lot of money so yeah, a collective impact group on online markets. Uh, we'd love to be part of that. And we've got a lot of experience. Great. Um, thanks, Jason. And um, there is a, there's actually a, a webinar in the chat um, that is coming up. Um, Lindsay put it in the chat too, but a series of webinars, right? Okay. So look, look for that. We'll, we'll send that. Um, it is on Monday. Um, the first one is on Monday, so um, we'll make sure um, uh, to we'll be sharing our our, our information um, follow up information on Monday. So um, be sure to uh, register for that if you want to attend it on Monday um, today. So um, from this link. Um, and then I saw a lot of folks are really work looking to increase their vendors. Um, that is kind of a a perennial issue with our markets and our rural markets. So um, we'll we'll be following up with some maybe just some tips, like a, a weekly tip. Would that would that be useful to you, like on a like on the Facebook platform, um, rather than having to get emails? We're all so overwhelmed with emails. I feel like they get lost. Um, um, and any any last last sharing. Um, before that last sharing, just please, you'll see the link. Um, it's just a survey to help us do better and, um, and make these, this is a different platform, of course, and hopefully we'll be in person next year, but please um, fill out the survey so we can help, help you as much as we possibly can. Last minute thoughts, anybody? Um, one of the goals that we are talking about at our market this year is um, bringing in more customers. Obviously, with COVID last year, uh, we lost a lot of the seniors that regularly attend the market, and we have a huge senior base that comes weekly. Um, so that was the numbers were drastically lower last year. So hoping to get those seniors back. And then um, I get a lot of feedback from our community that – you know, the people that would be coming to use their SNAP and the double SNAP program are going to work right when our market opens. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of service industry workers in Red Lodge and they're heading to work right around four o'clock and our market opens at 3.30. So we've really been kind of thinking about possibly doing a time change or a day change, how mm -hmm. that would work. Um, so I don't know if there's other markets that have made a major change like that we've been Fridays at 3 30 for eight years so I don't know how that would work making a change how the community would react um but it's something we've been thinking about targeting who figuring out who our target audience is our target customer and getting them to the market this is uh Samantha with O'Hara Commons again Sammy and I wonder if you might not be a really fantastic candidate for starting a second market rather like we did um we, our online local food market is a drive-through, so there's, uh, we don't have 
it's basically like a curbside. And we serve a lot of um, elderly people who are extremely COVID um, wary. And uh, we, we set it up in a manner to complement our Wednesday afternoon market rather than actually um, compete directly with it. And it, that sounds like it might address both of those. You can make it address both of those audiences that um, you feel like you're missing out on right now. And with that second market, how did your vendors respond to that? I'm trying to think of uh, going to my vendors and saying, hey, you want to do a second market during the week? And then going, heck no, that's too much work. <laughs> I had a huge and really fantastic um, um, reception of the market. We started with 15 vendors. We've grown to, I think, about 24 vendors. At this point in time, we have over 400 people registered. And on average, uh, we have weekly sales of probably about 65 uh, sales per week. We see a lot of our customers um, leapfrogging. So we see people shopping every other week. And um, during the first four months of our online local food market being open, we've generated um, over $44,000 in gross sales. Um, so it's been received really well by both, both vendors and consumers. And we have people adding things to our market. Um, somebody just added some beautiful shallots. That's all he has. And that's perfectly fine. A vendor doesn't need a full array of a product. They can just add something that is uh, uh, in excess for them at that point in time. Great, thanks. And there's some other suggestions for Sammy here too. So we'll make sure that these get put into um, put into the the chat summary. And um, I want to thank you all. I know we're all busy. We're all zoomed out, um, but it's just been great to see everybody's most some faces we didn't get to see because of <laughs> at least see your names <laughs> and. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to gather um, again in person next year. Um, but in the meantime, please keep your eye out on that Facebook. We'll probably start doing some weekly tips on vendor engagement, um, on um, reaching out to seniors, those types of things that have come up at this, um, at this meeting. But um, I wanna also thank all of our um, partners for helping to talk about all the different um, awesome resources that they bring to the table. And um, Mara, did you wanna say anything else in closing? Yes, thank you all so much for uh, attending today and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to working with you all in this next market season and throughout this project. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mara. And thanks for helping um, get corral all of us into this, <laughs> this virtual training. And, um, and we will be in touch. Take care and happy planning. Bye, thank you.